Visitors to Iowa's parks and forests expect a certain aesthetic accompanying their adventures. They might be looking for exposed bedrock or rolling bluffs, but the number one expectation is trees with pervasive green leaves. Iowa may not have mountains or oceans, but our recreational areas are packed with trees. Well, that is, they currently are packed with trees. Right now, we are standing at the northeast part of Backbone Park, where Backbone State Forest lies. So we're looking at some of the larger, more mature vines of Oriental Bittersweet. This is what happens when it goes unmanaged. It's vined all the way up to the top of the tree. It's shaded out the canopy. There's no lateral branches left in this tree. They're technically dead. Everything as you look through this forest, I would say about 60-70% of these trees are dead or near dead. As a forest health program leader, I was brought up here a couple years ago and asked, what would I do with this massive stand of woods? And the answer was simple, but the public won't like it. I'd clear cut it. Asiatic or Oriental bittersweet is one of the many invasive plant species that are slowly and surely strangling Iowa's forests. While each carries its own ecological threat, invasive introductions to Iowa all sing a common refrain. Asiatic bittersweet was initially discovered for its unique vines and beautiful bright red berries, which hobbyists, gardeners, and landscape designers began using freely. It wasn't until it was far too late that the forestry community discovered there are no native predators in the North American ecosystem, and the plant practically spread like wildfire. Of the six invasives we'll look at today, each found its way across Iowa through similar means and spread far and wide before their threat could be detected. So we'll start with Asiatic bittersweet. We see this in the Iowa landscape throughout most of the state right now. It's very aggressive. The vines can be easily six inches in diameter. The fruits are carried by birds easily. The process to control Asiatic bittersweet is costly and dangerous. Using a basal bark herbicide, which is a dangerous mix of chemicals and diesel fuel, the treatment is to spray the vine of the invasive plant only, as this measure will likely kill any plant it comes into contact with. On top of the chemical hazard, this technique adds up, costing hundreds of dollars per acre. But we've tried everything. We've tried burning it, and any time that you open up the forest floor, you get more of this oriental bittersweet. bittersweet. We've tried spraying in a young area, and you can look out throughout this forest, and you'll see these vines everywhere out here. The big key, in my opinion, is it's very paramount to walk your forest annually, especially if you can get your district forest out there, and look for this plant. If you see it there, manage it as soon as you find it. Another invasive that spreads with little effort is Japanese knotweed. Found primarily around waterways and moist forest floors, similar to Asiatic bittersweet, Japanese knotweed grows at an exponential rate, and it will steal any and all resources from native plants. This is one that we see on the forest edge. You see them along the edges of trees, usually in disturbed areas, often along riparian areas, along, along streams. It can be very, very tall. The problem when you're next to a stream is if you mow it and you break off a piece, and this falls into a wet area, this will grow. To fully grasp how bad invasives can be to a native ecosystem, Japanese knotweed is the perfect illustration. Once it takes over, nothing in our environment can withstand its resource pressure. If you look at how dense this is, and imagine if you're a tree seedling trying to grow underneath there, can't at this point, it's just too shaded out. Invasive species have been an issue for as long as there have been pioneers traveling through forests. When the first settlers of Iowa stomped their way across Iowa's marshy plains, black locust was commonly used to stabilize nitrogen levels and for fence posts. While sturdy, it's an invasive that spreads like a weed and has tiny barbs that irritate the skin. Similarly, reed canary grass was brought in during the late 1800s for pasture and erosion control and now it is virtually everywhere due to its seed being carried by the wind to all corners of the country. In the 20th century, bush honeysuckle arrived as an invasive that literally started as an ornamental. Designers would line houses with the plant or make Christmas wreaths featuring the berries. But once again, the bush became so oppressive it was eventually banned for any use. It's illegal to transport it anywhere in the state of Iowa because it's so invasive and those berries are still viable no matter where you go. So that's the last thing we want people to do is think they have a pretty plant and they're going to make an ornament out of it. Then when they're done with the ornament in the fall, they throw it in the ditch. Well, it's going to grow. 
Of course, not all invasive fights are losing battles. Garlic mustard was once pervasive in backbone, and in 2005, the DNR secured grant money to test using one of conservationalists' most powerful tools in a hope to restore the natural forest floor. So we started with all the typical techniques to control. We started out with hand pulling it and bagging it up. We started out with spraying it with glyphosate. And then we started out with burning it. And then we noticed this, the strange phenomenon. Burn, burning it worked quite well. The other thing that we found though from the burning is when you look back in here, you'll see the ferns came back, jack in the pulpit, all the native forbs and flowers, everything came back that we haven't seen in this forest for quite some time because it was just this carpet of garlic mustard that is now gone. Invasive species are puzzles. Some are easy to figure out, others extraordinarily complicated. While difficult invasives such as Asiatic bittersweet or Japanese knotweed can be managed, once they get out of control, See straight down the trail a little bit, strangling that tree. Reining them back in takes time, money, and intensive labor. Resources the Iowa DNR is always judicious with. Unfortunately, um, it could take up all of our time, but we have, we have to prioritize, and uh, we don't have enough time to, um, to spend 40 hours a week on invasive species, but we have so many other um, priorities that we have to um, attend to to make the park nice and to attract people and uh, keep everybody safe.